Is Candy Technologies KNDI stock a buy? Up over 100% in one day. Another electric vehicle stock with a lot of hype right now. If you're staying on top of all of these EV stocks, then click that like button and subscribe. Welcome to Mr. Zero to Infinity for episode 57. For this episode, I'll go over what caused a major jump in candy stock price, and then I'll finish with a quick update of my Zero to Infinity stock portfolio. Before I start this episode, remember that all my episodes are for entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor and anything discussed on this YouTube channel should not be viewed as investment advice. I am only sharing my personal ideas, opinions, and one of my stock portfolios. You should never take any of this information as guidance for buying or selling any type of investment or security. There are financial risks associated with investing, so always do your own research prior to making any investments. So let's get into it. Candy Technology stock jumped from $4 to over $9 in a matter of two hours. So what's the big news? Well, Candy America, which is the U.S. subsidiary of Candy Technologies Group, ticker KNDI stock, an international auto manufacturer, and recently made an announcement stating the launch of the most affordable electric vehicles on the U.S. market. Tesla, you might have some competition. The announcement said there will be a virtual launch event on August 18th to kick off pre-sales for models K27 and K23. Available delivery in the fourth quarter of 2020. Based on the Candy America website, Candy Technologies Group Inc. is based in Texas, and it's a company that designs and produces electric vehicles in China. Candy wants to be an innovative technology company that provides eco-friendly transportation at an affordable cost to make electric vehicles accessible for all. The K27 model is priced at a little under $13,000 after federal tax credits with a driving range up to 100 miles. The K23 model is priced at $22,499 after federal tax credits. It's a larger vehicle with more trunk space and has a driving range of more than 180 miles. If you've been following along with my episode series, you already know that there's a lot of hype around these electric vehicle stocks. You have Tesla stock, TSLA, Workhorse stock, WKHS, Nikola stock, NKLA, Hylion stock, SHLL, Arrow stock, AYRO, NEO stock, and I could go on and on. Some of my most popular episodes were about these EV stocks. If you've been following this trend just like me, Tesla's success has provided a roadmap for other EV stocks to compete in the industry. Everyone wants to find the next Tesla stock so they can make a lot of money. KNDI stock is obviously moving on the announcement and all the Robinhood traders are piling in based on Robintrack.net. If you are bullish or bearish on candy technologies, let me know your reasoning in the comment section below. For me, I think it's too much of a speculative stock. There's too much downside risk because when it comes to trading stocks under $1 billion in valuation and stocks under $20, there's a ton of volatility on any type of news. I don't have time to follow the stock price all day and no one knows when the stock will start to top and drop sharply. In my opinion, a lot of beginner investors prefer to trade stocks because there's a thrill from getting in early on a stock and watching it pop over 100% in a matter of hours. If a stock doesn't move for a couple hours, they get bored and move on to the next stock. Traders are constantly on the hunt for the next best trade, which doesn't match up with my personal investing strategy. Let's pull up my zero to infinity stock portfolio, which I've been documenting in every episode. If you've been following along with these updates, click that like button I really appreciate you supporting the channel. Since I don't have lots of time to spend hours watching stock charts and tickers on a screen move up and down all day, 
I invest in stocks that I believe have potential to grow over long periods of time. I have a simplified bull thesis on each stock, and my thoughts and opinions have been discussed in all of my episodes. Since I focus on the long term, I don't have to watch the gain or loss percentage of my stocks every single day. I've only been building each stock position higher and higher over the last 50 plus episodes, and I have yet to sell any stocks in this portfolio. The portfolio just broke over $9,000 and the five figure club is getting closer and closer. My year to date performance is over 70% at the time I took this screenshot. You may think that's high or low. Luckily, everyone has their own unique way of multiplying their money with their own goals and risk tolerance. This 70% gain can easily drop negative at any time. That's the risk I take on when I invest in the stock market. There's never a guarantee when it comes to investing. I haven't asked this before, but I'm curious to hear from you listening. What's your annualized return goal over these next 10 years? Are you looking to make 10% on your money every year? Are you looking to make 20% on your money every single year? 50%? I'm interested to hear your answer because... Regardless of what investment strategy you use, day trading, long-term growth investing, dividend investing, everyone has a performance percentage metric at the end of each year. Looking on macro trends at the S&P 500 index performance over the last couple of years, the S&P 500 was up 28.88% last year, and up to this point in 2020, it's flat. 0.86%, so less than 1%. This chart gives you an idea of a performance metric that a lot of investors look to beat each year. For me, I'm not competing with anyone but myself. I'm just a retail investor, maybe just like you. I don't have to hit a certain quarterly return or yearly return. Obviously, the higher the percentage, the better. To summarize, the stocks in my portfolio Fiverr stock is a play on the freelance and remote work trend that I'm seeing right now. Apple stock is a play on the 5G trend that's coming. Penn National Gaming stock is a play on barstool sports and the sports betting trend. Square stock is a play on the trend of digital wallets and the cash app. Starbucks is a play on the trend of online pickup and delivery of coffee. Shift 4 payments is a play on the contactless payment trend that I'm seeing. Costco is a play on the trend of being an essential retail business during the stay at home economy, along with the online pickup and delivery trend that I'm seeing. That's just a quick and simple explanation of a few trends that I'm seeing. Let me know what trends you're seeing in the comments section below. If any of my stocks sell off, I'll look at that as a buying opportunity and keep my emotions in check. Let's end it there. Play the music. If you made it this far into the episode, then make sure to subscribe. One of my favorite comments from last episode is on your screen. Feel free to watch my earlier episodes of how I'm growing one of my stock portfolios from zero to infinity. All my episodes are meant to be watched in order since the stock market is always changing and there are always new trends to be found as the weeks tick forward. Instagram is Mr. Zero to Infinity. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully, you'll join in on the next one. Let's keep building from zero to infinity. You got this. Disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor and anything discussed on this YouTube channel should not be viewed as investment advice. All ideas and opinions presented in this episode are mine and mine alone. You should never take any of this information as guidance for buying or selling any type of investment or security. Always do your own research prior to making any investments. Do not assume any facts and numbers in this video are accurate. Read the disclaimer on your screen fully. Peace.